This video describes the technique of laparoscopic dorsal mesh rectopexy. The port placement is described here. Patient is in reverse turned birth position. The A is the camera port. B and C are the surgeon's right and left hand working ports. Surgeon is standing to the right side of the patient. Camera is at the foot end. D is the assistant port to provide uh, retraction of the sigmoid from the left side. Once the bowel is taken out of the pelvis, an initial uh, peritoneal incision is made at the root of the rectosigmoid mesentery uh, at the level of the sacral promontory by progressive dissection and the avascular plane below the uh, uh, inferior mesenteric vessels is developed. The plane is between the uh, visceral fascia covering the mesorectum and posteriorly the presacral fascia covering the hypogastric nerves. You can see the uh, hypogastric nerves there posteriorly. Subsequently, we extend the dissection laterally and uh, the ureters are identified and protected. The dissection uh, proceeds in this uh, avascular heels plane, the same plane as we use for a LAR or any uh, rectal mobilization. Uh, that's the uh, uterus that is being uh, hitched up to the anteroabdominal wall to give us good access to the rectouterine pouch of Douglas. The dissection uh, proceeds along this uh, heels plane. Towards the uh, tip of the coccyx and the pelvic floor. A gauze piece is being placed on the uh, ureters and then the lateral peritoneal reflection on the, of the rectosigmoid mesentery is divided so that the left and the right planes of dissection are joined. This part of the dissection is almost like how we do for a CA rectum uh, labia, the same plane, the heels plane between the presacral fascia and the uh, visceral mecorectum we do. We always keep doing in the center posteriorly and then once the, the plane is developed we divide laterally. The only difference between this and the mobilization uh, we do for in a CA rectum is uh, we don't divide the lateral ligaments much. We just do some uh, division initially that too very close to the rectal wall to, so as to not to uh, damage the lateral ligaments and not injure the nerve wire agent is there. So minimal division is then done just to give us some access and once that is done we the left, lateral rect, la, ligaments are left undisturbed because uh, dividing them uh, can worsen constipation. The resection uh, here is proceeding again in a in the posterior plane till the tip of the coccyx and the posterolateral pelvic floor muscles till they are seen we completely mobilize the rectum. You can see the pelvic floor coming into view there, the muscular pelvic floor, muscles coming into the view there. Anteriorly, the basically the uh, both the, so the peritoneal incision is extended uh, laterally and then anteriorly to so that the, both the right and la left peritoneal incisions join in the uh, pouch of Douglas and to make the cavity uh, the deep pouch of Douglas less shallow. The length of the mesh is, is measured a 15 into 10 approximately size mesh is placed in the sacral hollow and aligned on either sides. The lower end is sort of tapered down because the space is less there and upper end is quite wide. 
you see uh, to help in the alignment we've drawn a just a marker uh, is made in the center of the mesh so that that center aligns with the uh, perfect center and then the mesh is spread on either sides the mesh is uh, initially being fixed with uh, tackers onto the sacral promontory three tackers are placed in the midline subsequently the mesh is fixed with the on either sides to the sacral promontory with uh, two ethi bond sutures so some people use only sutures uh, we can just do that also but just some additional uh, tackers uh, a few tackers before we suture to sort of stabilize the mesh over the sacral promontory we put the tackers only on the second promontory not lower down and all the fixation as you see it is being done only in the midline because you don't want to injure the hypogastric nerves subsequently progressively about uh, one and a half centimeters apart three sutures three or four sutures are used to fix the mesh to the presacral fascia in the midline Like I said, the most proximal is at the sacral promontory, which we saw, and then progressively about one and a half, two centimeters apart, we sort of face uh, fix the sutures in the midline. Depending on how deep you can go and how accessible it is, we take three to four sutures. Then the mesh is uh, wrapped onto the sidewall of the rectum by taking about three uh, ethibone sutures on either side. The wrap is approximately 50% of the rectum. So we can take the mesorectum also always try to include a bit of the rectal wall muscle in the mesh for better quality fixation about three stitches are taken about uh, one to two about two centimeters apart the uppermost suture is sort of same at the level of the sacral promontory likewise on the opposite side we can use for all these posterior presacral fascia fixation and rectal wall fixation we can use either uh, proline or uh, ethibond switches uh, it's just for the ease of handling we use ethibond here also ensure that like you see, you see here we take a bit of the rectal muscle also uh, in the bites not just the presacral not just the mesorectum If the suture is a bit loose, as in this case, we can actually use a slip knot. We may be straightening the knot and then we can tighten it comfortably. The last step is uh, the peritoneal closure. Uh, basically, we extra peritonealize the mesh uh, so that it doesn't come in contact uh, with the bowel. Uh, obviously, there's a risk of bowel adhesions or bowel erosion. So for that, we close the lateral peritoneal gutter that has been created while doing the rectal mobilization using 2O V-lock sutures the completed peritoneal closure no drain is placed post-operative recovery is usually uneventful uh, as the complete rectal mobilization is done we generally tend to re discharge the patient with the folies and remove it on day three in the OPD follow-up.